Well, definitely not. Uh, it has had, I mean, we all know what's the sort of impact it is having in Afghanistan. Those are sort of, you know, very out there. But within Pakistan, too, it has, I mean, it has uh, affected all of Pakistan, but specifically the the northwestern areas, um, in a in a really adverse way. Right now, we're having all these drone strikes, which are often like sort of ignored because um, they're not an all-out war declaration, but um, they are killing innocent people every day. And even like the with the, the Pakistani authorities themselves are do not really question them. And in fact, there are certain WikiLeaks cables which show that they have um, actually agreed to uh, having these drone strikes. So um, nobody really seems to you know, question the fact that there are innocent people dying and, well, ha and just because, I mean, they are Pakistani citizens or they live in those northwestern areas, it does not mean that, you know, their lives are not important. And uh, besides that, even in the rest of Pakistan, with all the suicide attacks, etc., militancy is is actually gone um has actually increased many folds since the war on this war has started and i don't think it's ever it's going to end unless the war ends first so do you think that the the war is is actually fueling the 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 continued um operation and rise of uh, taliban other fundamentalists yeah it surely is because um when when you see people around you dying and your family members dying, then any ordinary person is also sort of you know they 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 have more um, of a reason to sort of join these militant outfits and because of the rising poverty and also because of the displacement of the people that there's so many people who are being displaced because of this war in the northwestern areas. Um, obviously, when they come to bigger towns and cities and where they don't find a place to live and they're not accepted and they don't find jobs or if they do then they even still they're fi living in like really um, sort of uh, terrible conditions so um, you can completely understand the reasons why it would uh, sort of you know get worse what is the uh, how what, what is the attitude of most uh, young uh, people in Pakistan to this war because it's a long time 10 years is often the you know, it's the whole adult life of a of generation. Uh, what what what's most young Pakistanis think about it? Um, it depends. I mean, I think the in the general mood in Pakistan is very anti-war. They are they, and also it's become very anti-America. I mean, I, I guess we know that, but it's sort of increasingly become more anti-US. Um, yes, there are always people who support that because. Um, when you're sitting in an urban area and you're not directly affected by the war so much, it's easy to sort of feel that you know it's um, it's those people who are sort of uh, who, are, who are creating this whole mess. But I think if you see like a general sort of um, perspective, then people do understand the fact that um, that USA needs to get out of Afghanistan and that things have become a lot worse since the war in terror started and since Balkans are trying to, you know, um, what, become an, uh, such a close ally of U.S. on this. And the, the war has been very, um, um, very profitable for the, for the military in Pakistan, hasn't it? They get a lot of... Uh, yeah, obviously, because um, a lot, most of the aid that comes goes directly to the military. So um, it, it's in their interest to keep that going and um, in fact on one hand they seem to be sort of you know uh, uh, be sort of uh, fighting against the, um, the militants etc but on the other hand they also have their own strategic interests which don't necessarily always um, which are not always the same as of the USA so um, they, they sort of play this really like you know um, contradictory game in which on what on they might be um, sort of helping the NATO troops at one end, uh, sending supplies to them, but also sort of helping the, the militants. So it's, I mean, it's hard to know what's really going on there, but it's a lot more complicated than, you know, what 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 they sort of, the rhetoric that they themselves produce, because on the ground, it's really the people that are being hurt, rather than um, the Pakistani government or the U.S. government or the, the, the militaries on both ends, because uh, for both of them it's actually a very profitable war and that's why they're doing it. Mm. And the military in Pakistan is not just a military, it's also got economic interests. I believe you've been working with uh, 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 peasants in Okara who are 
who are actually, uh, you know, uh, working on, on lands owned by the military. Is that so? What this military is a very funny thing in Pakistan, isn't it? Um, yeah, the military has um, a lot of like it has a lot of economic interests. It's um, I mean to be able to understand the role of the military. I mean the military has sort of like a what would you call the a very fundamental role to play in Pakistan. It's even if it's not um, uh, in power in terms of um, being in the government, it's always running the show. So uh, its own interest, like it has, it owns a lot of military farms. For example, the Qara thing that you're mentioning, it's um, its own. It's a lot of land in Punjab that is owned by the military or like leased out by the military. And um, the way they treat the peasants over there, it's it's just like horrific, really. And um, uh, otherwise too, they have it, military is like the biggest corporation in Pakistan. So besides the fact, besides all the uh, budget that goes to them in terms of um, like the national budget that goes which to them, which is big percentage, which is which is a big percentage. They're How also, much is it? Um, I'm not sure what is this exactly right now, but it's usually a good 30, 40 percent of the of, of the budget.